Last week I silently assumed the cultural knowledge that Bender runs on an 8-bit processor called the 6502. We ended with Java code based on bytes and I said, well, you could theoretically port that to, <laughs> to Bender's processor. And today I'm actually going to show you um, that I did that. Since I don't have actual Bender hardware available in 2025, we're going to have to wait another thousand years for that. I'm going to show you a different computer based on the 6502. In particular, the Nintendo Entertainment System was based on a 6502 and also the Commodore 64, which I used to program as a kid and teenager. Okay, so let's go to a Commodore 64 emulator. <laughs> And let me load my program. Here it is. So the program for demonstration purposes is stored in the screen memory. <laughs> so here you can see an example IBAN starting at the 2 and ending here. Before that is 6502 code and after that is the um, lookup table containing all the weights for the digits. Okay, and how do we start that? Let me let me show you. So this will start the subroutine at address 1600, which is here. And when the program is finished, we will print whatever is in the memory location 2. And that is 68. This is an example from the Wikipedia page. And 68 is the correct number. Maybe let's do it for our own example from last week and run the program again. And then we get 87, which is the correct result. Okay, of course, you can't really read this code. <laughs> um, so let's look at the source code that, that generated this funny looking code. Okay, so here we have a directive that states the following code should be assembled into address or starting at address 1600. Then we start as last week with a value 62. So first, we load the very first digit, then we clear the carry bit and add <laughs> to our accumulator or to the A value the uh, looked up value for the very first digit, just as last week. And we need to clear the carry bit because the add instruction always takes the carry bit into account. There is no add instruction without the carry bit. And then we look at the next digit and add it again. And this time we don't need to clear the carry bit because here it was in an indeterminate state when, the, when we started the program, but this addition cannot possibly set the carry bit in. The numbers are much too small for the first digits, so we don't need to explicitly clear it and we save one byte in the program. Okay, then we load the next digit and add the looked up value up. And now for the first time the values could produce a result bigger than 255, then the carry bit would be set. So we have to check if the carry bit is still clear we would jump to here in the program, effectively skipping the uh, following subtraction. And the subtraction is similar to last week, but this time, since we are working with a full range up until 255, we can subtract two times 97. So we will only need about half as many subtractions as last time. So let me fast forward to uh, the very last digit. And then we have a loop that has the, let's say, target invariant of producing a value between minus 97 and minus 1. We do that by repeated, repeatedly subtracting 97 while we don't cross the zero boundary, if you will. And then we build the ones complement by flipping all the bits, which mathematically computes negative 1 minus a, and then we add 2 to it, effectively turning the um, negative 1 into a positive 1. Okay, and then if you do the math, uh, positive 1 minus negative 1 would be 2, and positive 1 minus negative 97 would be 98, and that's exactly the range that we require as the end result. Okay, and finally, we store the result in memory location 2. Okay, then we return from the subroutine. The rest in the program is data, so here's our example number, and after that is our um, our table. Um, yeah, so that's the concrete proof that Bender could indeed perform the IBAN checksum computation, even if we will have to wait another thousand years 
to test it if it actually works.